you should bring you some breaking news from a court case that's been happening up in Newcastle. Uh, it relates to a series of offences involving the sexual exploitation of a number of vulnerable women and girls. Mike McCarthy is there for us. Mike, what are you able to tell us? Well, finally, after four trials here in Newcastle, we can reveal that this involves a vast investigation by Northumbria Police based on the city of Newcastle, spanning at least three years and involving, certainly at the beginning, a potential 108 uh, victims. Uh, we've just heard from court that the current trial uh, of four, as I said, has finished. And we now know that 18 people have been convicted in relation to what the police have described as Operation Shelter. This is a large investigation into the sexual exploitation of young girls and women by a network of men, British-born men, mainly from Asian communities in Newcastle. The judge is speaking at the moment, as we understand it, but one of the uh, shocking uh, details of this, uh, for some people at least, is that the police employed a convicted child rapist and paid him approximately £10,000 to act as an informant as part of this investigation. We can't identify this informant. He's been referred to in court simply as XY, and his role came out in hearings before the current trial. Now, what we do know is that he was recruited by Northumbria Police, despite the fact that he had once drugged an underage girl before raping her and then inviting another man to rape her. We should say that at this previous hearing, the judge involved, Penny Morland, said there is no evidence currently to suggest that Northumbria police or any other police officer acted in bad faith. But we're getting reaction as we speak. And we've had a statement from the NSPCC. This is from the lead expert on child sex abuse, John Brown. And it's fairly long, but I think it's fair to say that it is highly critical of the police. It begins, we are appalled to learn that police paid a child rapist and planted him in the midst of vulnerable young girls. You just couldn't make it up. It beggars belief that it would ever have been considered, let alone approved. And serious questions must be asked about the force's approach to child sexual exploitation operations. It goes on to say, however good the force's intentions, their misguided actions run entirely counter to all current child protection procedures and what we know about sex offenders and could have compromised this investigation. So very strong words indeed uh, from the NSPCC. Going back uh, temporarily to the wider operation, this was called Operation Sanctuary, and within that umbrella operation was Operation Shelter, which led to the four cases uh, that I was referring to earlier. Now, of the 18 people who've been convicted, 14 of them, that's 13 men and one woman, have been convicted on a range of offences that involve uh, some kind of sexual activity. Uh, many of them were charged, for example, with conspiracy to incite prostitution. Uh, we're just sort of waiting to hear what words there were, if any, from the judge in this case. But just by way of a little bit of background, it all came to light when social workers went to the police some years ago. The offences concerned took place between, primarily between 2011 and 2014. We know that social workers who were concerned went to the police with information. There then followed uh, approaches directly from some of the victims involved. And this is what led to the uh, opening up, if you will, of this massive uh, investigation. Now, what the police discovered is that there were a network of men, and they discovered this network by looking at telephone data Primarily, once they uncovered evidence, they found links between their addresses and that kind of thing. They found a network of men who were luring uh, young girls, young women, 
into what they described as sessions, which were basically sex parties. How did they lure them? Well, basically in similar ways to cases that we've heard in the past, by grooming them, by making them think that they had a special relationship with a particular man, by offering them free alcohol and drugs. Uh, this led to some of the victims being afraid to go to the police because they were already drug addicts and they were being offered drugs for free and they didn't want to go and admit that uh, to the police. Uh, one of the drugs uh, was MCAT or methadrone, as it's known, other people call it uh, drone. Uh, this was just one of the methods used by some of the individuals involved to lure these young, vulnerable victims into these sex parties. It is very similar to some other cases that we've heard, but one striking um, feature of this particular investigation is the very controversial use of this known sex offender, this child rapist who was employed uh, and given close to £10,000. This is something that the police haven't responded to yet. They've confirmed that, that this did take place, but we're waiting to hear what they say about that, and we're expecting a press conference from the Chief Constable of Northumbria Police later this afternoon. And, and Mike, what of the victims? 108 of them. Did many of them speak to the court? 108 potential victims at the start of this inquiry. I don't think anybody can say for sure, uh, because of the scale of this operation, exactly how many were confirmed as victims. Some of them were called to give uh, evidence and they spoke of various stories. The offences against them uh, range quite considerably in seriousness. Some of them uh, were raped. Uh, some of them, uh, as I say, were offered drugs when they were already addicted to uh, drugs. Some of them were intimidated. Some of them were abused um, and made to feel, as I say, that they had some kind of special connection with some of the large number of men who were running these networks. I have to say that the individuals concerned, those who were convicted again, faced a range of offences uh, uh, over the uh, course of these four trials. Uh, some of them, many of them, uh, were charged with supplying MCAT or supplying cannabis, uh, but some of them, as I've said, charged with much more serious offences than that. Okay, Mike McCarthy uh, bringing us the latest there from Newcastle Crown Court, where 18.